Okay, so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to be doing the physical properties of matter corrections. Okay. This was the quiz that we took last Friday. If you did not take the quiz, you will need to do these corrections because once I release the answers, it's unfair to grade anything as an original test at this point. Okay, most everybody did take the quiz. So what is the color of a mineral in powdered form called? A mineral in powdered form is called a streak. Okay. Now, here is a streak plate, and I'm hoping it'll show up on the video. Here is some talc. Okay. I am going to scratch it. So even though the mineral kind of has this bluish tint to it, its streak is white. Okay. Here is a pinkish color rock, okay? Or mineral, excuse me. If you look there, its streak is not the same color as the mineral. That is why we cannot always trust the outside color of a mineral. And this mineral is actually, this is feldspar, okay? Let's try some fluorite. This is a green color. Okay, and again, it looks white. Also, do you notice that the talc, I could just go rub it, right? I'm not really having to do anything heavy and it's coming off. The other ones, I'm really, let me kind of rub it off here with my finger. The harder the mineral, for example, this is quartz, and it's higher on the most hardness scale, I'm really having to bear down to do that straight test. Okay, so the softer the mineral, the easier it is to do that straight test on. Okay, that's talc. Um... Here's some gypsum. Okay. There we go. Okay. So that is, and here's some magnite. Magnite. And if you can see, that one is a brownish color. So they don't always have a white streak. Okay, the white streak, that's the one I did earlier. Okay. So that is a streak test using a streak plate. Okay, and I've lost my pencil, guys. Bear with me. I'm sorry. Let me grab another one. Okay. Which of these is not a property of a metal? Okay. So, ductile is we're able to bend, right? Brittle breaks easy. Lusters reflect light. And conductive means to, it creates electric, um, easily conducts electricity or heat. Hmm. So let me get, give me just a second here. I'll be right back. I'm sorry.
Okay, I apologize. Okay, so here's some sulfur. Okay, it's yellow in color. And watch what it does, guys. I'm going to take a hammer to it. I'm going to get a smaller piece. Okay. Look at that. It breaks just like that. Right? Now I have some wire. And I forget which. Ah, oh, this is aluminum. Aluminum wire. So this is ductile, right? I can bend it. I can mold it. If I was to, so it's malleable. If I was to hammer it, nothing's happening, right? It's not breaking apart. So that is, not a brittle is not a metal, okay? Brittle is not a characteristic of a metal, okay? And I found my pink pencil. Um, brittle is not a property of a metal. Because a metal does not break easily. Now remember, you are going to type exactly what I write into the test correction document. Okay? Here we go. A graduated cylinder has 10 milliliters of liquid poured into the cylinder. A substance with 900 grams of matter inside is added to the graduated cylinder and the liquid rises to 100 milliliters. What is the density of the liquid? Okay, now you're not going to be able to draw the picture, but I do want to draw it out. I would like to see um, you type in the math, okay? Now, if, you, if you're able to and you know how to be creative and draw the graduated cylinder digitally, or, or if you're doing this um, on paper, then please, that would be great to draw it out, okay? So here's my graduated cylinder, okay? Now, oftentimes, you're going to see these questions where it's two graduated cylinders, so I'm going to do that, okay? And here's my original one, and it says it was up to 10. And there's my meniscus. Okay, so that curved part, it's at 10. Okay? I'm going to drop a substance that has 900 grams of matter inside, which is the definition of mass, right? And that says 900 grams. Let me see if I can make it a little bit bigger. There's my substance, right? Okay. I'm going to draw my substance in. And it's going to, I'm just going to put 900. I know it's small, guys, but that does say 900. And my water then rose to 100. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the difference. 100 minus 10. Well, guys, that's 90, right? And I'm going to set up my density problem. Density equals mass over volume. Grams over cubic centimeters, because remember, one milliliter is equal to one cubic centimeter, okay? 
So my grams was 900. My volume was 90. Okay. My volume goes on the outside. And I'm going to go ahead and do my T chart. Five, six, seven, eight. Now I do my multiples as a T chart. You may like to do yours in regular uh, multiplication fact form, and that is fine. 90 times 1 is 90. 90 times 2 is 180. Times 3 is 270. Times 4 is 360. 450. 540, it's 900, oh gosh guys, I'm scared I'm going to give the wrong answer here, okay, 630, and 720, okay, that one had me completely thrown off, it's been a long day, okay. So, now I'm going to go over here and I'm going to divide. 90 divided by 900. You notice I'm not really scrunching up my numbers, right? Okay. If I had $9, can I buy anything that costs 90? No. Now I need to bring down my next zero. If I have $90, can I buy something that costs $90? Yep, I can buy one thing. I'm not done. I still have another zero to bring down. If I have zero dollars, can I buy anything that costs 90? No. Okay. So my answer is density equals 90, excuse me, 10. Again, why we do science and pencil. 10 grams per cubic centimeters. Okay. And there are, again, the problems worked out. Trying to zoom in a little bit more. And again, you can always pause it. So this would be one, this would be two, this is three. Okay. And more corrections coming soon.